as I finish out this little discussion of John chapter 1 with you, uh, I would like to say to you that it was pretty, uh, it was pretty embarrassing when you consider what happens. Um, if you look at, a, at the, if you look at the Bible story uh, in John 1, 10, how did men receive him? How did men receive and accept the, the word, the preexistent Christ, God coming in human flesh? In John chapter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says he's in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He made the world. He's the creator of the world. He's the owner of the world, and he shows up in the world by miracle and public announcement, and they rejected him. The Christmas story we like to tell it. We always show the ones that accepted it, the, the, the shepherds and the wise men. But there's a guy who wants to kill him named Herod. He came to his own, and his own received him. No, he came to Jewish people, and they wouldn't receive him. Uh, I just want you to realize that the fact that the majority of the people today are rejecting Jesus is the same thing that went on when he got here. If anybody should have been able to, for them to see him and trust him and believe him, it should have been Jesus. The world he made did not recognize him for who he was. The world he made and the people that he were called his own people, they didn't receive him. They rejected Jesus. They rejected his testimony. His own disciples are following him and still having a hard time believing that he is who he really is. They've been following him for three years. He's about ready to go to the cross and, and Thomas says, I, I, I don't know. Thomas doubted that he was really risen from the dead. Thomas didn't know the father. The, the, the guys all went fishing. It was a kind of a lazy world just like it is today. They walked down a road talking about what might have been, you know, but Jesus died. They didn't, it, it, it wasn't clicking yet. He really is God in human flesh. They said they wanted to see the Father without realizing Jesus was a manifestation of the Father. The Bible says in John 1, 12, as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, if, even to them that believe on his name. You have to believe in Jesus. And God gave you power to be saved. And it's not, you can't be born into this, which are, we're, we're, we're born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, you can't will yourself into it, your parents can't will you into it, nor the will of man but God. It's God that saves. So as we celebrate Christmas this year, I want to challenge you to focus on Jesus coming to die on a cross. There was a shadow of a cross laying across that cradle. And maybe nobody else in the room sees it and understands it yet, but Jesus knows he's come to die. Salvation is found in believing him. You got to believe that he, what he said. You got to believe who, who, what he said about who he is and who he was. He's not a man, but he is the pre-existent God come in human flesh. You know, you got to understand that God created the world and the world rejected God in the very beginning, chose to do their own thing, and they still continue to do that. You got to realize that Jesus Christ created the world. He was with God and he is God. Salvation is a God thing. I hope you'll share the, your faith with your family this, this uh, Christmas. I hope that, that when you're all sitting around the table or you're eating a big meal or you're fellowshipping and talking, I hope that you will say to your family, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? We take too much for granted. We assume that our grandchildren are saved. We assume that our children are saved. We assume that our friends are saved. We don't ask them about it. But Christmas is about salvation. In all honesty, in all truth, Christmas is about salvation. It's about Jesus Christ coming to earth to die on a cross so that man could be saved. He came to die. Men are helpless, completely without remedy. There's no way forward, only Jesus. You have to believe that he is God and he has every right to tell you how to be saved. You can't say, 
Well, I have my own church and my own religion, and I believe this way. No, you got to come to him knowing this. You failed God. You sinned against the holy God, and you're going to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. He came to earth to save you. Trust Jesus to be saved. Believe him. Believe him to save you. You need to be saved today. If you're watching this and you're listening, I want you to know, you just need to know this. You have sinned against the holy God. Romans 3.10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Nobody right, nobody perfect. All have sinned, Romans 3.23. All have fallen short. Nobody measures up. The sin brings a wage, and that wage is death and hell, Romans 6.23. But God offers you a free gift Jesus paid for on the cross of Calvary. He loves you. Romans 5.8 says, but God commended his love. God showed his love. God proved his love. But God commended his love that... When Jesus came to that, God was saying, this is me loving you. That's what Christmas is about. If you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, I pray that you will today trust Christ as your Savior.